No individual in the history of the Melbourne Football Club has given more of himself on the field than David Neitz. Most games, most goals, most games as captain and the club's solitary Coleman medal. Sadly, no flags. Welcome, David. Thanks. It was going all right there for a while. It was going it? beautifully early <laughs> and then, yeah, the no flags. So, um, yeah, obviously it would have been great to, to get one of those by my name, but not to be. Now, there are blokes that you and I both know well, Barassi and Bluey Adams, six premierships in the 50s and 60s. Mm. You've been used to that fact for a long time, but are you still envious of the, the, the glory days? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's phenomenal the record that those guys have uh, have gone through throughout that fifties and sixties period, and the Noel McMahons and these types of of people. And uh, it's been a hell of a lot. Fifty years it's been since our last flag, and. Uh we were very hopeful for a period there. We had uh, a chunk of time where we thought that we could contend, but uh, ultimately couldn't get over the line. Let me take you back to the year 2000. You reach the grand final, yep. you play the all-conquering Bombers. Mm. What are your memories of that day? Um, yeah, it, it was an amazing week, the build-up to grand final week and the roller coaster of emotions and nerves and excitement and those types of things. But um, look, my, my memories from the game, uh, yeah, obviously not positive memories. Um, uh, had a couple of chances early to put mm -hmm. some scores on the board, which you, you me had, personally, yeah. yeah. You had the first score. First shot, first, first shot, match. yeah. Yep. So, um, no, I relived that in my mind a few times and uh, went back, left foot snap and um, hit the post. So, uh, couldn't get the score on the board. That day, you're, you're playing a team that was clearly the superior team of the year. There's no question about that. They dropped one game. They barged their way into the grand final. Mm. Going to the ground that day, in your heart, did you believe you could beat them? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We'd come close throughout the, throughout the season. They, they knocked us off, but, um, but we pushed them to the limit throughout the season. And, um, and we came in knowing that they were the favourites, but also knowing that we had this huge momentum and push in, in through that final series. So, um, yeah, we gave ourselves every chance. You know, looking back now, we were sort of caught up with the excitement mm. and, uh, of it all. But, um, you know, we didn't, didn't at that stage, a really young team, we just didn't quite know what it took to, to take the, the next step and win one. Um, yeah, but we never got there again to give it another no. go. Now, talking about young, there was a young bloke called Brad Green played that day. Mm. In my view, there was a pivotal moment late in the first quarter. Mm. Brad Green was, in footy terms, assaulted at centre-half forward mm. and nothing happened. Now, he was in your vicinity and David Schwartz's vicinity. Yeah. Should you be, looking back on it, did someone at Melbourne need to fly the flag then? Yeah, look, to be honest, completely honest, it's an interesting one because you look back and, and it's very clear what's going on. But, but on the day, I didn't even know that that had ha actually happened until you know, much later in the day. It wasn't until probably half time where I actually knew that this had actually happened. It surprises me that something can happen in your vicinity yeah. in such a big event and, and you not see it. Yeah, uh, well... It's, yeah, it's just, it is. I mean, I'm not getting I mean, a word, but I'm just saying, it just seems funny. Yeah, I, I guess you're fine. There's lots of different things that are going going on. And, you know, there's little scrim, scrimmages and pushes and shoves here and there all over the place. But, yeah, the actual, that, that act, it just, yeah, didn't, mm. didn't sort of register with me anyway. I don't know what I was doing at the time. Who knows where, where I was focusing on, but... Mm, Looking at the race results. Yeah, the I, don't think it was, I don't think it was quite that. But. <laughs> now, Neil Danaher was your coach that day. You developed a, a magnificent relationship with him as, as uh, player and captain and coach. Mm. Take me back to the start of the, the danaher Neitz relationship. Was it, was it in New Zealand? <laughs> yeah, went to New Zealand. To Wellington, yeah. Yeah, yeah over to Wellington, played the Swans over there. In a pre-season game. Pre-season game, yeah. And, um, you know, we come, come from uh, Neil Barmer, who was, you know, as he is now, he's quite relaxed and measured in the way he goes about things. And then we got our first real taste of, uh, of Danaher, the intensity of Neil Danaher in that game. And uh, I think that uh, I had been on the ground for most of the first half. Um, and midway through the last quarter, he's dragged me, put me on the pine and uh, put Sean Smith on. Um, and at half time, he, <laughs> he wasn't all that impressed. Can you remember so, the dialogue? Well... It, it, well, he didn't give him that much instruction, but he basically he came in, uh, you know, fire and brimstone, you know, fire in his eyes, and just singled myself and Jeff Farmer out, and, and for me it was, uh, Nita, Nita, <laughs> take a <laughs> mark. 
Uh, you know, Sean Smith comes on for five seconds and he takes a mark. Can you please take a mark? <laughs> So at least I knew <laughs> what he wanted from me, but, uh, but poor old Wizard. Whiz go? Paul, Paul Wizard didn't get any instruction at all. He just got three belts. Wizard! Wizard! <laughs> Wizard! <laughs> and that was it. That and then was he, it. he actually blew up a gasket in his uh, voice box <laughs> and had to hand over to Greg Hutchison, who took over for the rest of the instruction. <laughs> so that was his first ever speech as the Melbourne Melbourne coach, but uh, he certainly made his mark. But that that photo there tells what happened down the track. I mean, you you became very tight with the coach, didn't you? Yeah, look, I thought uh, he was just fantastic for our club and for our for our group. Um, I guess throughout my time at the Demons, there'd been a lot of upheaval, you know, externally and within, you know, board and CEOs. We had lots of turnover going on um, at that time, but he just did a magnificent job of keeping our group together. He's just got an amazing ability to absorb a lot of that external pressure himself, absorb it, and then, you know, protect his players. And he just did that really manfully and, and I thought it was magnificent for our group. When, when, when he finished, he finished uh, round 13, 2007. Yep. You were banged up, weren't you? You, uh, you hadn't played the previous week. You wanted to come back and play in his farewell game. Absolutely. Was, did you have to convince him that he should let you play that day? No, no, no. I didn't have to, didn't have to convince him at all at that stage. But my, my knee was gone. I think I just had surgery on my hand. My knee wasn't, wasn't right. I had a few, few things going on with my body, but um, there was nothing going to stop me. I wanted to be out there and, um, and at, least, at least, you know, fly the flag. Do you remember the exchange with Neil at the end of it? Did you, the dialogue? No, it wasn't much dialogue really I just think that there was just an understanding of the effort and in my way in a, in a um, very uh, public way just say this is this is the type of uh, guy that that you know this is what he meant to me as a player and I just wanted to make sure that I um, that I did him proud on that day in his last game and um, yeah, and and thank him for the work that he'd put into our club and to me and my development personally. So he was, he was a huge figure, obviously, in my footy career. You've become close friends with Neil, and you know, as, as the world now knows, he's got motor neuron disease. Do you mm. talk to him regularly? Yeah, we, we, we catch up. We catch up, but he's in Perth, obviously, mm. still at the moment, but, um, but we catch up when he's down. Um, but, yeah, it certainly is a huge, huge... Um, unbelievable shock to the system to to hear of that disease and then finding more about it and and, and, and sort of where it sits. But um, but uh, as as a man, you know, he <laughs> I spoke to him over the phone when I first found out, and uh, his response is typical. Dad is, um, we spoke about it for about five seconds. He told me that um, that uh, in his experience. Um, what, from what he knows, you know, it's a very slow developing and he's got plenty of time and it's, we shouldn't worry about it. But he also said, but I've got no scientific evidence to back that up. <laughs> and then let out a huge bellowing laugh. Yeah. And then really, he's, uh, it's all just about let's get on with it. Let's yeah. enjoy each other's company um, and enjoy life. And, um, and that's how it's been. During the Danaher reign, the footy club's uh, fortunes were amazingly up and down, weren't they? You had the peaks and troughs almost uh, every second year. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we did, we did. We had, well, his first year in 98, he, he took us to school, um, you know, we, uh, and it was an amazing turnaround from, you know, 96 we're emerging, 97, you know, we were bottom of the ladder and then he came in through over that uh, 97, 98 pre-season and... We had a really great team in '98. We had, you know, you know uh, sorry, we had uh, Gary Lyon, Totten Viney, Jim Stein, Stephen Tingay. We had a really, really talented mm. group. But he was able, to, Brett Lovett, you know, but he was able to reinvent some of those guys for, for at least for that year and really get us up and going. So uh, yeah, '98 was was. I still think '98 was probably a, um, even though we came off a really low base our best chance to actually win one. In the really? Yeah. Bring, even though we made it in 2000 to the grand final, yeah. I really thought that 98 was our year that we could have really made made that impact. You were a physical player. I mean, you're a big man, but you did like, you did enjoy the physicality of the football field, didn't you? I did, yeah. 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 And that's, that was all part and parcel of it. And that's my role as a big guy. As a big guy, that's what you're there to do, to be able to create a really strong aerial contest, first and foremost. But where you can, you want to make sure that people around you know that you're there, create a presence on the Ground. I'll tell you what you did do. You gave me one of, not me, us, one of the great memories of uh, modern Melbourne in the first round of 2002. Yeah. You're playing against the Hawks. Yeah, that's right. You're coming out early in the game, coming out from the goal square. 
loose ball, Luke McKay from Hawthorne's in your path. Mm. You demolish him, win the footy, kick the... Uh, you kicked the goal for, then, didn't you? Kick the goal, yeah. yeah. One of five for the day. I mean, that was, a, that was a moment, I think, where you and the footy team said, last year was an aberration, we're better than that. I think so, yeah. And, and you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the talk coming off the 2000 grand final and a really poor 2001 season. And, you know, we spoke about it earlier with a few of our guys roughed up in mm. the grand final, the Michael Long and Troy Simmons incident. So the, the tag of Melbourne being soft was, uh, was going around and that was something that I knew that I needed to stand up and be counted. Um, and look, Paul Luke McCain, it was, <laughs> it, was, it's, uh, it was a great um, um, moment, I guess, for me personally as far as making a statement about what our season was going to be about and what I was going to be about. <laughs> but unfortunately, poor old Luke McCabe was in the way. But um, he's a victim for the cause. Wasn't it was he? a victim for the cause. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but look, it, it was a real statement moment in the end. You played centre half back and centre half forward in your first year when you were eighteen. I mean, that's that's a big achievement. Playing in, in mm. the two toughest spots on the ground, perhaps uh, at such a young age. Yeah, yeah, it was um, <laughs> it was interesting. My first year, I played uh, first few games. I played the forward pocket alongside Alan Jakovic. Mm. So <laughs> that, hey, that was a good seat at a great show. <laughs> last too long. My instructions were to just get out of his way, <laughs> basically. So uh, I think one game I kicked uh, five or six early, and Jacko wasn't happy, so I had to move it back to the. Back to the defence. Lots of us who care for the Melbourne Football Club got thrill after thrill watching Jakovic play at full forward. Yeah. All too brief. You saw him up close. Tell mm. us a bit about the bloke. Oh, <laughs> he was, as you saw him on the field, I think, just an enigma. It was just unbelievable. He didn't, he didn't care for training too much. He didn't care for rules too much. Yeah, yeah. He just commanded that 50 metre arc. His presence inside that 50 was, was phenomenal. Um, and his strength and his reading of the flight of the ball in the air, you know, he was phenomenal. At, he'd run people under the ball and, you know, run rings around them, really spit of the threatening bit, turn around and run into an open goal. His reading of the footy and the, and the play was just, just phenomenal. The man that I regard as the greatest player I've seen mm. said that you were his toughest opponent or one of his toughest one of, opponents. Yeah, one of, his, one of his toughest. And, and look, I, I played on Wayne a few times and got the better of him a few times. But, um, but he was just someone that you just had to be on your medal the whole the whole time because um, he could just turn a game, as we all know, so quickly. Um, I did, I, as, as much as I enjoy the, uh, the times when I was able to get over the top of him, I do remember vividly uh, playing against him. It was a night game um, against North and I was lined up centre-half forward initially. I uh, think Sean Smith was on Wayne in the first quarter and he kicked four in the first, you know, uh, first half of the first quarter. Uh, and then I got a tap on the shoulder to... <laughs> to head back into the back line. And, um, and my memory of that game is that I actually thought that I couldn't have done it. I played as well as I mm. could have played. I actually spoiled it quite a few times and was right up on him and did everything I possibly could have done. And he ended up kicking 11. Did he really? <laughs> he kicked 11 for the day. And on the mark, I've never felt that way on a footy field before. I always felt that I was better than whoever I was playing on. Whether I was or not, it's a different <laughs> story, but I always felt that. But at that moment, I just thought, wow, I, I, there's nothing I can do yeah, on, this, on yeah. this guy. It's unbelievable. When you became captain, you beat your mate, Swarter, for the job, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And it was a fairly public... It was. Yeah. Well, you made it public. I, just, <laughs> I was hoping you forgot that. <laughs> so, it, was, it was quite public, but it was... Um, uh, but it was great. It was it was uh, really good. We had a fantastic. Yeah, you know, we had a fantastic pre. We ended up, ended up making the grand final that year. But we had a fantastic pre season. We we're both egging each other, yeah. pushing each other along, pushing the whole group along. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and it was it was fantastic feeling within the group. Um, but yeah, there was a bit of conjecture as to, as to whether Swarter should get it or I should get it. Um, I must say now, I think the club made the right decision. Well, it was, it was interesting. We're two very different personalities. Yep. You know, he's a very flamboyant, charismatic kind of guy. Um, and, and, you know, lots of people would follow him naturally because of his charisma. Um, but I was a different way of, of, of getting it done. And, um, and I was, I guess, more about action, getting it done on the, on the ground. And not as big of a personality mm. within the group. But... Um, but um, but I think I led by my actions really well all the way through no, my career. No, I agree with career. that. I agree with that. Was, did it create any tension between the two of you? No, look, no, no, it didn't. Um, and and we, I think we worked really well together for, for that for a period of time. 
But then uh, the major thing, with, and it's well documented now, but with the Oxford, he's gambling and, and those mm. types, that, that really started to take a hold of him for a period there. And that then made it difficult because um, me, as mates, we're great mates uh, going up, but me as captain, I've got to pull my best mate yep. up because it, he's, going out, he's going yeah. outside of what, yep. what, we were, what we were there for and there to do, and that, that responsibility fell to me. Did you address the gambling specifically with him? No, no, no. not really. Not really. I think we all knew that he loved to, loved to punt, but I don't think anyone really knew the depth of, of mm. where, where he was at until it was probably fairly late in the, yep. in the piece, you know. When we come back, my favourite game of your time, the merger game. My favourite game of the Neats era was the merger game. Okay, yeah. Uh, Hawthorne and Melbourne, mm. last round of 96. Six. Yep. Um, I reckon the expectation was that 20 or 25,000 people might turn up. And there were 70 there, weren't there? Oh, it, was, uh, it was an unbelievable, unbelievable well, that night. Was really, uh, that was a great experience to be there that night. Yeah, it was, um, oh, it was obviously just the emotion of the game and, and you know, the first bounce of that game was ferocious. A lot of, a lot of emotion. And then, you know, Dunstall ends up kicking uh, his 100th goal of the yeah. night and there was... You, kick, yeah, you what, kicked eight? Uh, no, I'm kicking six, six, six yeah. in, in, in that one. And, yeah, you know, a point of the game, so... Did you expect that the merger to go ahead? I thought at that stage that that it would, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We, Tiger, we'd had some dialogue with the club, and Tiger Ridley had spoken to the to the players, and uh, particularly Gary Lyon, who was skipper at that at that time, who was the main conduit, but obviously between uh, you know the board level and the playing group. But but yeah, we thought we thought this is going going to happen. Um, so we knew we were going in thinking, well, half our list is gone, and this is going to be a huge mm. upheaval of um, of the history of the game. You know, considering the old footy club, yeah. yeah, we invented the rules of the game yeah. with, with Wills and those those guys. So, um, yeah, we we expected that that was going to go through, and this is this is going to be it. David, round one, two thousand and five. You're captain of the Melbourne Football Club. You lead your players onto the ground in a tribute game to Troy Broadbridge, who'd been lost in the tsunamis. Uh, in the off season, yeah. how difficult was that? Well, it's an unbelievable world v event, you know, on a world scale. But the personalisation of that with Troy was uh, was phenomenal, and everything that Trish went through as well, just um, just unbelievable. But uh, you know, a young man cut down in his prime, just a be beautiful person, such a giver to our to our team, and um, um, yeah, just 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 shattering circumstance. As a senior Melbourne man, you've had to deal with a lot. We're talking about Troy Broadbridge in this instance. Mm. Dean Bailey's gone. Mm. Jimmy Steins is gone. Mm. Sean White's gone. That's a lot for young people to deal with, isn't it? When you see, when you get so close to people. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, it is. It's, you know, over the last few years, it's been um, it's been phenomenal, really, with some of the, some of the guys you get close to, um, you know, going, um, which is which is just so super sad and taken in their prime. So, um, yeah. But I guess look, Troy was as part of the playing group. Mm. Um, and so suddenly and so tragically, and then for us as a as a team in that in that short period of time, having to come together to be able to yeah, continue on and perform in that season, perform in his honour, and particularly in that first game, that Essendon game, um, it was a very determined bunch of guys that wanted to go out and play and perform in his honour. But when you're young, football is tend to think they're invincible, don't they? I mean, mm. everything has gone well for them and they're playing the most popular game in the country. Did you feel amongst the playing group then that this had a massive impact on them about their vulnerability? Absolutely. I think so. I think so. You can't help but think about things, your, your own mortality at that, that point in time. It's not something you ever think about, but it's something that's happened to someone so close to you. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm sure that... Uh, Everyone's experience of death is different, but for that to happen to our to our group, um, and we needed to, we needed to take some time out to do some soul searching of ourselves. And you turn up to training the next day and think, well, what what are we yeah. actually doing here? Yeah. You know, why, why are we here training? What's this What's this all for? What's this all about? Um, but in the end, I think as a group and as a team and as a club, we really bonded. Two thousand and eight is your last year. Yep. Dean Bailey's the new coach. Yep. It's round three at Geelong. Yep. Melbourne loses by 30 points in a game you're probably expected to win. Mm. Tell me what happened after the final siren. Well, yeah, it's an interesting one. I, I copped the bake. I, I copped the bake from, uh, from Buzz. I don't really remember exactly what the bake was, was for. Um, 
but I copped it. A few of the senior guys copped it um, that day. Uh, Did you resent it? No, no, I didn't. Didn't resent it. Or at the time, I wasn't happy. But coming into the, into that season, I, you know, I was really, I was really battling uh, body wise, and also knew where the list was at, and we were, you know. Uh, Chris Connolly had come in at that point in time and reshaping the list and, and, and whatnot. So there's a whole lot going on uh, in the lead up to that game, and we copped it. And I copped it personally, and I probably was it fair. Look, we didn't we didn't we didn't play well. We lost the game that we that we probably should have should have won. But at that time, I I, I wasn't wasn't happy with it. Cracked it, cracked the shits. Mm. Um, now you know, the story was I, that I, you you were so angry with it that when the, you stayed for the meeting, the meeting concludes, play, everyone goes their different ways. That you left Geelong in your footy gear and drove home. <laughs> no, well, the stories do get <laughs> embellished a little bit along the way. But look, it's fair to say that I, I, I was. I was annoyed at, at the whole situation. I was probably annoyed at myself and, and my own body that I just couldn't do the things that I wanted to do and compounded by, um, by criticism by the coach. When I, In my mind, I'm thinking, I'm doing what I can, mm. but it just, uh, just wasn't enough. But, so I cracked it. I jumped in the shower pretty quickly. Didn't hang around very long. Didn't do the, didn't do the warm down properly and, but hit, and hit the road. A lot of senior players were moved on in that period. I mean, you, mm. you retired because your body gave way. Mm. But a lot of senior players were moved. Did they, did they, move, did they move too quickly? Did they, go, did they cut too deeply? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did, they did. Um, and obviously, you know that um, the plan was to get the young guys in to the to the club and, and give them some experience and all those types of things. But but uh, you certainly look at it now and you think that there are some players that could really guide. Who was cut prematurely? Who were the ones you, if they had their well, time over? Well, again? I mean, the James McDonald one yeah, is the yeah. most publicised yeah. one, um, and you know James was just just fantastic. And the, and the way and the way. It, it happened. Jo- I know James done, wasn't. Was it? it was badly handled, and mm. I know James wasn't happy with the way it all went down, and and, and, and nor should he be. But um, but he he sh- he could have stayed uh, for a bit longer. I even mean, a Brad Miller, you know, he he um, moved aside um, for a Jack Watts who had you know been there for five seconds and could have used the body around him to yep. to support him. He goes to Richmond and, and gets out a few more years. Um, and he's really, really serviceable did, did player. Did it affect the fabric? Did it affect the morale of the, of the player group, the, the, the McDonalds and the Millers and all those guys going? Yeah, look, yeah, yeah. Look, I, th- I think, I think it did. There's lots of things that that were happening. I think behind the scenes that were affecting our player group. Um, you know, <laughs> Bales and Connells, two key yeah. figures in the in the, the footy department weren't saying eye to eye mm. and that's filtering in through the player group and they know that there's this animosity happening and mm. and you, you can't operate at your optimal level or even close to it when all of that's going on. A couple of um, uh, uh, incidents after dark during your football life. Uh, one famous one where you made the front and back pages of the Herald Sun for a uh, extended visit at the casino. Yeah, well, we were we were struggling throughout the <laughs> throughout the year, uh, the early part of that of that year, and um, very tense. It was very tense around around our group. So we did. We decided. Well, let's. Uh, we need to just relax a little bit, take the take the pressure out, um, and in in the build up to the break, let's just go out as a group together, come together, and um, enjoy each other's company. Then go off, have a break, come back refreshed and uh, and ready to go. But um, and we did. We went to a local pool hall, had a good time. So you and a few of your mates went to, went on to the casino. So we did. We went to the casino, and in the end, we were there too long, too long, too late. Had too much to drink, um, and uh, I think it was myself and Craig Ellis. Were Walking out of the casino, jovial. I think we had a bit of a headlock, and it's you know, rubber the head and all what that time kind was of it? thing. It was pretty late. I, I don't know, it was it was too late. It, it would have been three what, o'clock like midnight or something or like that. It would have been two or three o'clock. It, yeah. It's way too late to be to be out and about. And there were three cabs at the Crown Casino, and uh, the first I went to the first cab, and he said, "No, I've seen you, you know, hijinks with your mate. You're not coming in." Second one, exactly the same. He said, "No, you're not coming in my cab." And uh, the third cab, I said, "Well, mate." I opened the door, jumped in and said, look, I'm going nowhere, so you're taking me home or else I'm going to sleep in your cab and that's, ha- that's what's happening, so you take me home. Uh, and he didn't, he wasn't happy. 
or he had a bit of a verbal. Um, and then next thing you know, I'm getting hopped, actually dragged out of a taxi. By a bouncer. Uh, by a bouncer, by about five, well, there was probably about seven or eight of them in the end, but um, yeah, dragged out of, the, out of the taxi. And then, uh, yeah, next thing they rang the police and, and here I was. Did you venture displeasure to the bouncers or did you go uh, quietly? Look, when, when you're getting manhandled by seven or eight guys, it's not a nice feeling, but I, I gave, them, gave them a bit of a surf. And, Anything uh, else? Um, look, I, I, I might have tried to bite back a little bit, <laughs> but um, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a fantastic memory, but um, I was pretty keen. It was, it was the buy, so I was pretty keen to get out of town after that, Mike. And, uh, How did you go next day? What, what did the coach say? Oh, look, <laughs> I went out in front of the media straight away and just said, this is obviously un unacceptable and, and those types of things. The club weren't impressed, you know. They were obviously came for us to go out and let our hair down, but they're not, <laughs> they're not wanting, wanting this kind of attention. So, um, yeah, they, 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 they gave it to me a bit, but um, I've spoken to Dennis about it since that and he said mate well, we're never going to drop you <laughs> so I knew you were going to no. I knew you were going to come back and give me something the next week so and did you so I ended up I kicked seven the next week good boy. well done well so done. I made sure I had to give him something back in return Hall of Fame hmm. you're eligible your yeah. record is undeniable hmm. you're a bit miffed that you're not in it yeah get me on where you Mike <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have any clout no, no 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 look, look I, I, it's an interesting one the Hall of Fame and, and some and some of the guys have played a lot of you know throughout my era are, are being inducted at the moment which is just fantastic it's fantastic for them but but at the same token there's the guys we spoke about earlier you know there's some of the guys in our in our footy club six premierships five mm. premierships and they're not in so there's a, there's quite a few Melbourne people that, that probably deserve their chance but uh, if it does come my way I'll accept it with open open hands and yeah. uh, and, Good answer. and yeah. enjoy it. Hey mate you've been an inspiration to all of us who care for the Melbourne Football Club over a lot of years. So you do care for the Melbourne Football Club? I do, yeah. great, great <laughs> to know. I booked it didn't I? Uh, no I do and and no one could ever query your commitment to to the on-field stuff and the off-field. You've been a great leader for the footy club and a great servant. Well played and good luck for the future. Thanks Mike.